So we have this quote here, and this is from a foreword in your book, mm -hmm. and this is by Jay Roach. And I don't know if you want to read part of it, and we've only fit a portion of it on the board here. We have the rest of it here. Sure. Most development execs, producers, and even assistants you encounter along the way are solid story crafters and could directly or indirectly become your collaborators and co-creators if you would. Dot, dot, dot. Just engage with them enthusiastically as teammates rather than defensively as critics and saboteurs. Where does your mind go when you hear that quote? Well, it, what, what immediately pops to mind is how many stories I know of people who found a property or found a script or found a writer and latched on and like a dog with a bone, Force that thing into existence, right? So, you know, I can think of, you think about Gina Balian with Game of Thrones or, um, I don't know, I don't know, I feel like a lot of the things that I've done where you find somebody and you just go, I'm so excited about this writer, you know, let's figure it out. Um, there's a lot of stories I think that you can you can pull out of it HBO alone. Like I said, I'm listening to this book right now and it's just like, you know, David Levine in True Detective. Like there's Franny Orsi in, um, and how she really took, I don't know, she she took uh, My Brilliant Friend and just, it was her baby from start to finish. Now, that wasn't on anybody's radar. So what a, what a miracle that, that she was able to create something along with the team that she'd assembled and the writer and, and all of that into something that's so beautiful. So you have to remember that for every failed project, there's probably another you know, equally passionate executive who is putting together something else. And sometimes, sometimes that thing, that first thing isn't the thing. Sometimes it's the second thing. Sometimes it's the third thing. Sometimes you just have to keep going until you find the right collaborator or you find that right idea and it's the right time. You know, there's so many, again, so many pieces of why something works at a particular time and why something might just miss the mark. But um, we are all part of the same ecosystem. The executive is the person who, who essentially takes that piece of work, that writer, nurtures that writer, hopefully in the right way, and then gives that, that project the 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 place to flourish and to and to grow and I think that no one gets into being an executive with terrible intentions we don't it's a lot of work so we don't go into it thinking oh I'm going to go smash people's dreams and ruin their careers you go in thinking you can help you go in thinking oh I love this writer so much I love this idea so much let me see how I can help it navigate through the gauntlet of everything that it needs to in order to get to the finish line. And again, I think that the when it when things really hit, they're usually a surprise. You know, I think sometimes you can see things coming. I think when we all saw the pilot of ER, we knew it was groundbreaking or CSI, the first one was groundbreaking or you know, there are some pieces that just pop out, you know, Breaking Bad. They're just things that, that just sort of automatically blow your, you know, your hair back. But um, sometimes things like Seinfeld that take time to nurture and then become huge and hit and hit really well. And you just don't know. You just have to believe and love in the the process and the, the, the creators. And, and you have to love story. We just... We get into it because we love story. We we are the same people that, you know, look, I'm the perfect example. I'm both writer and executive and had the ability to, to, do, to do both. And now I'm able to do both. But I was the same person who watched the 330 ABC movie, you know, every single day and watched Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers and Annette and Frankie. And I wanted to be involved in that storytelling. And we all read a ton of books and we all do our homework. And so our intentions are always good. We don't always execute them well. And we sometimes do have to grow up. So I think back on the, the notes that I gave when I was young 
they would be so different today. And I desperately feel like I want to apologize to every writer I gave notes to when I was too young to know how it really, really works. So sometimes we are not quite as skilled as we want to be. And we need to do a growing up just like a writer needs to evolve, just like the whole process needs to evolve. So, um, but I think that he's absolutely right in that um, we are all part of the same big idea, which is we all want to see stories created. And some of us just do it on different sides of the, of the, of the process. But we are all collaborators. Sure. But then when someone looks at it in a defensive light, is it because, you know, you had said earlier, there's so much going on behind the scenes that we don't always know with the network and, and whether it's advertisers or, or notes that the fans are giving back, different things. And so is the writer privy to all of that? Not always. I think there are a lot of, you know, there are a lot of meetings that happen. And there's, then there's sometimes there's things that, that you hold back or you don't want it to. I mean, there's plenty of stories about. I have tons of stories about projects that you'd be shocked about all the, the steps and the things and how many times it might have fallen apart. Is that important for the creator to know? Absolutely not. Would it hurt that person's feelings? Absolutely. If they knew exactly what was happening in those rooms, it would be devastating. So sometimes that not knowing is not a bad thing. Sometimes that's why people feel like sometimes executives are too close to the chest. And because things are, they change at the snap of a finger. So let's just say you've, we've got a project, it looks like it's going forward, but I can't necessarily tell you for, for sure it's going forward because I don't know. They might change, they might change the whole direction the minute before I, you know, if I pull the trigger too fast and then they decided not to do something, then, then you've, then I've, then I've blown that conversation. You've already gotten your hopes up. So there's a reason sometimes why they feel really cagey because they don't know or they haven't been given the authorization to pull the trigger. Sure. Um, and a perfect example of that is, I can't say it's perfect, but so um, Yunetta Boone, who passed away, had, had done a show, uh, a pilot called One on One for us. And, and yet you, we didn't see it on air until a year after. So she, she was waiting for the pickup the year before. She was at the party. She was waiting for that note for the, for, we were in New York and she was waiting for the, the notice that she was going to be on stage that next day. I'm pretty sure that that's how it went. And we ended up at the last minute not picking that show up. So that was devastating enough. But imagine if we had already said, you're on stage. And then we told her two seconds before she wasn't going to be on stage. Now, the good news is we loved it so much we picked it up the next year and the, and the show was off the races and it was an amazing show. But sometimes we don't have all the information. And then that comes across as cagey, deceitful. They're not, you know, sharing. Why are they doing this? You know, they just don't know. So it's, it's a, such a terrible little swirl of, you know, silence that sometimes can permeate and that can feel... Um, that the that the that the world is against you. It feels like the execs are against you, but then what you don't see is those same execs fighting for a project, you know, fighting for the life of something. I had to fight to get. I wasn't allowed to pick up Malcolm in the Middle at UPN, but I fought to get it released in a time when there was a pol strict policy that said we do not release projects, so they can go on to other networks. And I said we need to, this needs to exist somewhere. Now you don't see that in books you don't see that in I think I might have read, read it, put it in my book but there you don't you don't hear those stories about how people do champion and try to nurture and try to foster and try to help why would there why would there be execs in the room fighting against it so then why is one team want it and one team doesn't well things you know things like scheduling come into it so let's just say at a network you've got you've got a huge board when we were doing our programming for um, for UPN or even for Fox, they have these gigantic boards, and on these boards there's there's strips. So on one side it's like the the time slot, and then the network, or either way, time slot and the network, and then 
uh, each little strip, it's a magnetized strip, has the name of the show that the pilot that was just produced. And so what we're doing is we're hedging our bets and we're trying to think, well, if CBS has all procedurals and we're trying to counter program with all comedies, what's the best comedy that goes up against the CBS procedural, the drama, family drama on NBC, the ABC's got, you know, a, a, comedies, but they're buddy comedies. Let's go with a family comedy or let's go with a drama. So we are trying to figure out our schedule based on what other people are doing. So at the time that we're doing this, this is again, right up, right before upfronts. So people haven't announced their schedules. When they get announced is when everybody knows specifically when things are happening. So we are trying to counter program and figure out, well, what's our best slate that's going to do well against the others? Because we don't want, as a, as a UPN or a, or a Fox, or even if you're thinking, you know, these days with, with some of the other um, networks, they don't want the same show to compete against the same show, right? You don't want a black female comedy up against another black female comedy. You're going to cannibalize your audience. So we're trying to find the, the spaces where those audience are are not being served someplace else. That's why sometimes things move forward or don't move forward. That's why somebody might be fighting for or against. Maybe they don't love that show or they don't love that star or they don't think that it's gonna do well for that particular demographic or whatever. There's so many different reasons. Again, those are, that's making the sausage. That's the whole other thing that's, that's underneath that people don't always hear about. You know, do we have the right audience? Are people showing up to us for this? Or can they get this better someplace else? 